is this thing on? It is. <laughs> Great. Um, in um, the year 2000, um, I got my first um, web development job, and I was really lucky because uh, it was for a major publishing company, and I I got to work with with big websites uh, right from the beginning. Um, uh, my first job was <laughs> to build this form um, that users could could use to to send the an article or, or, or a link to an article uh, uh, to a friend. Um, it, it was very difficult for me because I, I, I barely had any school um, done before that and, and, and I barely know, knew, knew how to program. <laughs> and I also had to learn a new programming language and, and learn how the web works, basically. Um, so it must have taken like a week at least to build that. Uh, and probably it was a very bad solution. Uh, I don't remember the details, but one of the um, stupid things I remember it, it did was that, that you, the user could set, set also the um, sender's address on the form. So yeah, I basically created a, like a nice email spam server there. Uh, it, it didn't matter though because it was the year 2000 and I don't think there was much spam then. Maybe there was, but uh, it, like websites weren't exploited in, in the way that they are now, nowadays. Um, so uh, I, learned, I had to learn like how, how forms work and, and like looking that back right now, um, I think that was a very good good place to start because it's uh, you still need to know um, the basics um, like that, like how a uh, form is sent, like how, how HTTP works and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but you have to excuse me because uh, I'm not feeling very well and I have to go my to my notes. Yeah, uh, what I do remember though, like I, I took this task very seriously. Um, and I wondered like, why did I do so? Um, and only later I figured out that, that it was because it's kind of aligned with my um, core motivating factors. I only later realized that one of those, uh, the primary one is learning and um, I, I really wanted to learn this uh, stuff, and I was, I was lucky because I, get, I got to work with people that, that really knew the, their craft um, then. So I was learning very fast um, because of those other people, but also that, that because I was, uh, I was motivated in learning. And so I realized that, that, that it didn't make much sense to go back to school because there I'd spend, I think, one and a half years and learned basically nothing that would help me in my, my real job. So I basically, I it didn't go back to school. Um, so I stayed at that, it was a summer job, but I, I stayed there and uh, I, I went back to school uh, after that just for a brief period of time, but just realized it was not for me uh, the way to learn. So uh, I think, like uh, looking back, the the uh, taking the the learning seriously from the beginning and like learning the the basics of of what I do uh, very very well was crucial for me, and I think it's useful even if you think you are not a like a learner, which I kind of doubt because uh, a lot of this profession is is learning. A lot of people here. Um, at least like are okay with, with learning constantly. Um, but anyway, if, if you are such a person that doesn't like learning too much, I would concentrate my efforts to the very basics of the job because of things I learned then, uh, a lot of them are still, still applicable today. Uh, I have a few stories, uh, actually a bunch of stories prepared for, for this afternoon, but uh, 
Um, I have a cold, and, and so I'll, I'll be skipping uh, some of them. Uh, but lucky for you, I'll, I'll skip only the boring parts, and, and uh, so I'll get to the juicy ones only. So the, the next one is especially juicy. <laughs> Because it's a it's a story I, how I failed spectacularly, spectacularly. Um, so, but it's it's been so long since it happened. So now I can tell that be, without being embarrassed too much. Um, I, I was at my uh, my second job. It was the uh, 2002 or 2003, right about then, and. Uh, I was working for another uh, publishing company, and they had their CMS, which was built in Perl from all the languages. Um, it was built on ASP, Microsoft's ASP technology, um, which even th back then allowed multiple languages. Uh, but I, I didn't like Perl, um, so, so I started to rewrite the, the CMS in VB script because that's the future. Um, the project was doing fine, um, um, and then we were ready to, to deploy, like test it on a on a one website that we were maintaining, and that happened to be this website that didn't wasn't in any need of of special redesign. So we were just about to to change the CMS to a, a new version, basically. Um, uh, there were new, some features. But, but nothing, nothing major. Uh, the company was not any small business, but something, some, uh, which I would mention, but uh, publicly traded company anyway. Um, uh, the migration we needed to do, uh, I needed to do a migration because the database schema was almost the same, but a bit, but a dif bit different. So I, I created a script uh, that would transfer to the content from the production to the, 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 the new version of the website. And I was stupid enough to work with the live version of the website, so, so because who, who uh, takes copies? Uh, it's a waste of time. Um, uh, I was running my script and, and uh, noticed some errors in the, in the, the results, and so I, I cleared the, uh, the new database and, and uh, modified my script and run it again and did, did this a uh, bunch of times. So the idea was that then when I was done with the migration, we would present the, the new website to the client and then um, they would approve it and then we would go live. But uh, unfortunately, I never got that far. <laughs> so, um, somewhere there, I, I, I uh, got confused with the databases and I accidentally cleared the production database. I was like, I was stunned. I, I, I couldn't breathe, <laughs> I remember. Uh, but of course, my first reaction uh, was that, like, where are the backups? Because it's a live site, it must have backups. Uh, so I contacted my boss, and, and he wasn't aware of any backups, but like, let's see. <laughs> uh, we found some, but they were from the previous century, so they weren't very helpful. Uh, um, so, um, so I basically panicked that I, I couldn't do anything um, at that point. But luckily, my boss, he, he didn't panic. He was an older guy. Um, he had seen a lot. Um, so he assessed the situation, like, uh, what do we have here? Uh, so how far did you get uh, with your script? Like, how much of the content is, is, is all right on the, on the, the new version? And, I don't I remember how much, but it wasn't that far off. Um, the only trouble was that, that we didn't have any backups, so we didn't have the missing content anywhere. Um, I, I don't remember like who came up with the idea, but uh, the, the, uh, the result was that we basically, or, or I, uh, because I, I was the one to blame, uh, I went through Google's cached pages and like copied the content manually from there. It took a few hours just, so it wasn't that Bad. Uh, then my boss, he he uh, made a rubbish story to the the, the client that we, we just decided to go ahead with the new version because it's basically the same. And I wasn't at, the, at that conversation, and neither would I wanted to be there. Uh, but 
So I don't know what happened there, but, but in the end, everybody was happy and we, were, uh, we had that <laughs> site running there. Fine. Um, yeah, I, I learned a lot, obviously, but uh, obviously about backups, uh, you gotta have backups, I have multiple backups, and you had to make sure you have the backups. You just don't think you have backups, and uh, that's kind of obvious, but uh, I think more importantly, like, you need to trust uh, that there are other people that will help you if you are in need. You just need to ask. Um, does, in this case, it was my boss who, who clearly saved the day. Uh, but it doesn't have to be your boss. It can be your colleague or a spouse, your friend, anybody. Um, uh, but more in the kind of the context of this talk, uh, yeah, lost my point again. Yeah, when you, when you fail, um, and then if you fail like that, like really bad, but then you survive somehow. Um, you start to learn that, that even if the worst thing happens, um, you still get through. Like you are still alive, you're still breathing. Um, you didn't lose your job. I, I guess I could have lost my job. I didn't. Um, so you like start trusting yourself more. more. Uh, maybe for you, you need to fail multiple times, but but like every time you survive, you get more confidence. And at least it, like for me, that was kind of the moment um, that I, I started to not worry too much. Um, but then. Obviously, it's a process. It takes it takes a lot of time. We'll skip people because we're Finns, uh, and challenges. Well, I don't like challenges. Let's talk about money. Well, actually, this isn't about money, but there's a good word to put in there. <laughs> I'd spent eight years in, uh, in, in these two different uh, publishing companies when I decided to join this um, Microsoft consultancy, so to speak. Um, and I dared to ask for a salary that, that seemed outrageous to me, like, oh, I'm never gonna get that. But they said yes, like, there was no debate. Um, so I felt really happy. I'm going to be so happy in this job. Well, I, I didn't really think that, but it felt good. Like it's kind of, it was kind of a, like a recognition, like uh, get this, this big salary. I didn't like my job one bit. Um, obviously the money was good. And for some reason I got a lot of praise all the time. People thought I was this like superstar, but Really, I was just a blogger. They like confused those things. Um, <laughs> I got very challenging and interesting tasks and projects to deal with. Uh, the people were nice. I still didn't like it. The reason was that I didn't feel like home there. Uh, I, I, I still don't know like why was that, but I've, I've been thinking about it, and I was probably just that I didn't fit in culturally. Um, I'm a geek, you, most of you are geeks, and that was a very geeky company, but I guess it was too geeky, I don't know. Uh, just didn't feel like home. So, <clears throat> I kind of learned there that, that you, you need to feel home. At least I need to belong, for me, myself. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can, have, can, can give any advice. Uh, I was thinking about this and I thought, um, 
like it, it makes sense to talk to to the people that you are going to work with if you're like thinking about uh, starting a new position uh, in, in some company that you don't uh, know beforehand uh, talk to the actual people that you'll be working for not not just the people that will interview you that might help then if you have some information you can even like try to imagine what it is to work with them like how is going <laughs> your day going to be and whether you feel like it's like it, it is you I ended up spending like two and a half years there, um, and it was fine. In the end, it was got better, but, but I, I really didn't want to be there. Never been in a job. Well, I guess I was. I've been. Well, anyway, it was one of my shortest um, employments. So it was about. Uh, yeah, after that, I, I, I decided to start a like a new company. Um, and that was like uh, 2010, I guess. Yep. Uh, just before I started the company called H1, a uh, WordPress, company, uh, WordPress uh, company that doesn't exist yet anymore, um, I was talking to the uh, CTO of, of, of that um, Microsoft company that I, that I still work for for a couple of days. And, and he was also starting a new business, so we got talking, and and he asked me, um, like, what is the ideal size of a company you would like to run, um, in terms of like how many people will work there? And I had the answer ready because I already had fantasized about running a company for for a long time, um, and I said like 20 people, something like 20, maybe 30 people. Um, and uh, I had the number because I thought like having 20, 30 people um, would be like um, small enough that there weren't that much internal politics or, or stuff like that, uh, people uh, not liking each other. It could be, still be a kind of a family, um, but it's lar it would be large enough to, to do interesting things, have big clients or big enough clients and, and, and projects. But the CTO like reacted to, to my, my, um, my idea was that like, he couldn't see me running a company of that size. I don't remember the exact words, but, but he couldn't, could, couldn't see that happening. Uh, I don't know why, uh, it was probably just, just that, that even in that geeky company, I was not much of a people person, uh, and he thought it would require kind of people skills. Um, it could be something else. It doesn't matter, really. Uh, and I could have like taken that, and, and I could be very <laughs> discouraged about like, something like that. Like, you can't do that. But instead, I, I, I chose to th that prove this guy like he was wrong. <laughs> I can do this. Um, well, I couldn't. In a sense that we couldn't grow um, to that size ever. But it didn't really matter because that wasn't the goal. It was just um, a vision. And many times when I ran H1, I was thinking about that, that guy <laughs> saying that I can't do this. And it, every time it gave me some strength to continue. Of course, if, if people keep you telling you that, that you can't do this uh, all the time, it can't be good. But sometimes you can choose, like, how do you react to people uh, giving their opinions about what you can or cannot do. And th in this particular case, I chose chose to take it as a challenge. Late 2015, I got divorced. Um, and as you probably can imagine, it's hard to do your work. 
when like big changes are are happening in your life. I think it took about a month, month about a month that I was really down and and I just barely could handle my like basic routines. But then it started to get better. Um, right about then, I kind of created this strange uh, game for myself. Um, every every month, uh, I was doing billing. Like end of the month, I was looking at like how many how many billable hours everybody had at at, at H1 had had created and. And I noticed that, that that particular month, I was ahead. I was, I was doing, doing most billing. And I was trying to find that uh, enjoyment on, <laughs> on little things back then. But then I realized, like, if, if, I, if I do this regularly, like, if I, if I start to track this, uh, because I know myself, I'm, I'm like a goal-oriented. If, if you give me numbers, I, do, I try to uh, make them better all the time. So, so I made this game myself. I, I want to I wanna bill the most every, every month. And I did that for about four months or so. And then I was feeling so good anyway, like internally motivated. I didn't ne need any extra help. I stopped doing that. Sometimes if you, you feel um, down or even depressed, um, like lifting yourself above the, the actual issues that, that when you are down, they, they, they might seem impossible or very, very hard to tackle. Uh, in a simple way like that um, can help. Like in my case, it made me see like a customer pro problem, some, something wasn't working, or we, were, we had to build this one thing. Uh, it was, instead of like being a, an issue, like how, how to solve this, uh, it came, became just a, like a numbers game. Like if, if I spend four hours in this, I will get four points in my, <laughs> my tracking list. Yeah, worked for me. Uh, doesn't work in every situation. Kind of the basic message here is is to to know yourself, um, because the better you know yourself, the better you can come up with ways of thinking. Um, so that, that, that you can trick yourself in a way to, to see the issues in a better light so that they are easier to tackle. Um, I would go so far as to recommend that you would like regularly, maybe even weekly, um, Think about yourself, basically. How did you, during that week, like react to things? Um, what did feel good? What did feel bad? Um, and you can do this in many ways. You like, you can meditate. You can write a diary. You can talk to a friend. Uh, but whatever you do, like, you try to learn about yourself. Like the next day, try to apply what you've learned and repeat this cycle, like test, use, use yourself like a, as a test subject. Yeah. My name is Aki Björklund. I'm a lead developer at Zealand Family now, which is now owns the company I mentioned, H1. And we are hiring WordPress developers. Come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, Yara. I hope you feel better soon. <laughs>